Okay, so I'm picking up here in the middle of this program. So if you're not in my class, this might not be useful for you, but oh well. So the goal was to create a numerical calculation to find the electric field due to a charge rod. In class, we manually broke this rod into four pieces and then used this program to calculate the electric field due to those four pieces of the rod, charge rod. So let's just go over this program and then I'll show you a better one. But this one's good too. Okay, this is a good program. Good, good. Okay, so I have my constants. This is the length of the rod, the charge in the rod, the observation location, that was all given. Okay, so the first, I each, if I break that rod into four pieces, each piece is a fourth of the total charge, that's that. And then to find this location of the first charge. So the rod's half a meter long. So the left end is gonna be at negative 0.25. So that's this X location, negative 0.25. But I need to then add on an eighth of a piece in order to get back to the middle of that piece. So that's what this plus 0.5 over eight is. Uh, so for R2, it is an eighth of the total length to the left of the origin, and the next one's eighth to the right, and the next one is 0.25, and then minus the 0 0.8, point an eighth. So those are those four positions. Now what I do is I calculate the vector location from that point charge to the, electric, the observation location, and then I calculate the electric field. And then I, I call that E1, and I do it for 2, and I do it for 3, and I do it for 4. Ba bam Run it. Okay, so here's my, this is my total electric field right there. Okay, so that worked. We were happy with it. And then we said, well, let's, and, let's, let's make it a little bit smarter. So here's the program that we have next. So I have the same thing, but I have N equals 4. DQ is Q over N. And DL is the width from, the distance from one point charge to the next one. So if the total length is L, then L over N is that. Now here's where I made my mistake. I said, okay, where's that first location? I said, this is true, actually this is right. Same thing, negative L over two plus DL over two. That's right. And there's my observation location, this E vector, I'll talk about that in a second. And then I said, while RQ dot X, rq dot x, r is q as a vector, okay? If I put dot x, it only prints out the x component. So this thing says, do everything that is indented after this and after the colon, don't forget that colon, as long as this is true. So if rq dot x is less than l over two, I couldn't put a vector there. It wouldn't work, actually. So let's run this. And here you see I get the same uh, vector positions I had before. Um, so two things. One, if, let's just say, let's take out that dot x. What happens? Say it can't use, it can't compare a scalar and a vector. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. So dot x. Now, the other problem I made was, so what I did was to find the next position. I took the previous position. This is this, and this is, I don't, done with that. I don't need to. The previous position plus this vector I had DL over N, 0, 0, but DL is already divided by N, so that's what messes up the whole thing. So it's working out. Okay, so I have that. So now what do we do? The next thing we do is to calculate the electric field due to that charge, that point. Okay, so I, I'm actually going to do this before I move to the next position. So I'm, I'm just going to say uh, R equals R obs minus RQ, just like we did before, but here Q changes, right? Now I calculate the electric field. I'll call it E temp equals K times DQ times norm, norm you gotta spell it right, norm R divided by mag R squared. Now here's where I want to add this electric field to the total electric field. So that's why I have this line up here. I need a total electric field to add it to. If I add it to, to nothing, it doesn't make sense. So I need that zero vector. What's the electric field before I start adding things in there? So now I can say the new electric field E is the old electric field E plus E temp. I could print those electric fields out if I want. And then I'm gonna to move to the next location. 
and then I'm going to de-dent. Okay. Once I de-dent, I'm no longer in the loop, so it won't get to line 22 until after the loop ends. I'm just going to say print e. Boom. That is the same thing. Do you, do you not believe me? Let's go back over here. Same thing. Negative 33, negative 30, negative 30. 30. It's, it's identical. Okay. Identical. So we don't need to print Q. Well, we could. i to turn it off. Okay. So, but what does this give us? Well, I mean, the other way is just fine. And it was fine. But now watch this. Watch this. N equals 40. Look at that. It worked with 40, right? I can print out every single RQ if I want, and you could check and everything, make sure everything's right. There's a whole bunch of Qs, right? But it worked. Okay, so now I can do things like, does it work at uh, on the y-axis? So I can change this to zero, zero, and I have 40 and run it. And I can calculate this exactly, right? Um, because I know the equation for that. And then you can see if the change with distance correct way and everything. It's all great and fun and everyone has a good time. And there you go. That's one way to do it. Now, you could also, you could also visualize this. You could make a program that shows the location of all these charges, makes all these charges as objects, and makes electric field a vector. But I think this is pretty good. Good enough. You don't have to visualize it. I mean, visualizing it is pretty good, but you don't have to. Okay, the end.